hello guys welcome back to my channel anytime medicine and today we are going to talk about is folate and vitamin b12 folate and vitamin b12 they both need in thymidine synthesis and homocysteine metabolism like we have seen in thymidine metabolism video that how b12 and folate will need to thymidine synthesis deficiency of one of them will lead to decrease dna and increase homocysteine level because without thymidine we cannot make dna and thymidine need for dna synthesis you can see the structure of thymidine and homocysteine down below now we will see that how thymidine is synthesized. Thymidine is synthesized from uridine with the help of thymidylate synthase. You can see the structure of uridine and thymidine, they both look similar. Only the difference in thymidine structure is this one carbon group. This one carbon group is come from N5 and then tetrahydrofolate. In this process, N5 and then tetrahydrofolate will convert into dihydrofolate. And that dihydrofolate will convert into tetrahydrofolate and with the help of dihydrofolate reductase and that tetrahydrofolate will convert back into N5 and then tetrahydrofolate that's why we will need the constant amount of N5 and then tetrahydrofolate in our body in order to synthesize thymidine monophosphate some of the amount of dihydrofolate will come from folate that we consume from diet and some of the amount of N5 and then tetrahydrofolate will convert into N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and that will convert back into tetrahydrofolate with the help of vitamin B12. In this process, homocysteine also convert into methionine. We will see that if we don't have enough folate, we cannot make dihydrofolate as we cannot make N5 and tetrahydrofolate and if we don't have enough N5 and tetrahydrofolate, we cannot do this thymidine synthesis reaction. If we don't have enough vitamin B12, we cannot convert N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate. That's why amount of N5 and tetrahydrofolate will be stuck in a form of N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. And if we cannot do also homocysteine into methionine, that's why we will see the high amount of homocysteine in our body that we will see in further slides. Now we will see how S adenosyl methionine or SAM works is a cofactor which donates methyl group and synthesizes from ATP and methionine. As you can see, that SAM is synthesizing from methionine and ATP, and this donates this one CH3 group in any structure. As the function of SAM, it will donate one methyl group from its structure and remove adenosine group from it and making homocysteine. Homocysteine will convert into methionine with the help of vitamin B12 and folate and that methionine will convert into SAM with the help of ATP. You can see that vitamin B12 and folate is very important for making the methionine. If we don't have vitamin B12 or folate, we cannot make methionine as we cannot make SAM. SAM is really important for making homocysteine. That's why we will need the constant amount of SAM. If we don't have enough SAM, we cannot make homocysteine or as we cannot make thymidine. Just the summary of big picture before that methionine is converting into SAM and SAM is converting into homocysteine and that homocysteine will convert back into methionine with the help of methionine synthase and vitamin B12. In this process N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate converts into tetrahydrofolate and that N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate comes from folate. So you can see that vitamin B12 and folate is very important for this process to occur if it get deficient to either one of them we cannot do this process as we cannot make the thymidine if we summarize last few slides that thymidine is synthesizing from uridine with the help of thymidylate synthase and this process N5 and then tetrahydrofolate converting into dihydrofolate and that dihydrofolate convert back into N5 and then tetrahydrofolate in this process we will need folate if we don't have enough folate we cannot do this process as we cannot make thymidine so N5 and N10 tetrahydrofolate converting into N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and that is converting into tetrahydrofolate. In this process, vitamin B12 is very necessary and similar to this process, homocysteine is converting into methionine and for this process too, vitamin B12 is very necessary. 
now if we deficient to this vitamin b12 we cannot do either one of this process that's why we will have high amount of n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and therefore there is low amount of tetrahydrofolate and we cannot make thymidine and there will be high amount of homocysteine level 2 If we get deficient to either one of them by either vitamin b12 or folate we will develop certain syndromes like megaloblastic anemia in megaloblastic anemia you see the symptoms like low hematocrit level and large blood cells therefore there will be high mean corpuscular volume and there is hypersegmented neutrophils and this commonly caused by abnormal dna production because of vitamin b12 and folate deficiency another factors that can cause megaloblastic anemia is orotic acid urea and certain drugs that can inhibit the synthesis of DNA like methotrexate, 5 fluorouracil and hydroxyurea and HIV drug like zerovirin also can uh, inhibit the DNA synthesis and that can develop the megaloblastic anemia we will see the deficiency related folate and vitamin b12 in second part of this video so thank you for watching this video share it to your friends subscribe to my channel and see you until my next